This is hopefully going to be a quick little video exploring how to make a color tracker or shape tracker of sorts without having to use the built-in blog tracker. So I'm going to delete our default and I'm going to bring in a video device in. And plugged in, I rather than my laptop's camera, I have an external USB camera mounted on a tripod that's pointing down at a blank surface. I've also created two little cardboard colored squares, one that's completely red and the other that is a mixture of blue and green. And we're going to use these to try and track colors throughout our space. So this is a standard HD web camera and by default, as you can see there, it comes in at 640 by 480. To do all of our color processing, what we're actually going to do is we're going to narrow down the colors that we want to track try and exclude every other color from our image. We're then going to turn whatever we're left with into, into pure white and use a threshold to gate what is black and what is white. So hopefully we're left with an image that is just our color, all white. Then using some pixel processing, we're effectively going to get an X and Y location for the center of the mass of color. So the first thing I'm going to do, as with color tracking or tracking in any sense, I'm going to reduce the resolution of my scene. Uh, I'm going to go down to about an eighth. That might be a bit drastic, but we'll start with that. And the reason that we reduce the resolution is that even at 640 by 480, there's still 300,000 pixel, individual pixels that need processed. Whereas 80 by 60, we're only having to deal with 5,000 pixels, which means we can process much more within a single frame because the majority of tracking is going to be loaded onto the CPU. The reason for this tutorial is, the reason for this tutorial is I've just had a lack of success using the blob tracker to actually track things that I need in a scene. So I tried to devise my own method that let me track objects as and when I needed them that I used for top-down image capture. And then there's also this version that we're creating here that is purely for color tracking. So after I've reduced the resolution, what I want to do is I want to start sampling out my specific colors. Now we could do some more complex, I uh, get the color value of a pixel in a scene to pick the color you want to track. But in this instance, I'm just gonna manually do it. To extract the color from our scene, I'm gonna, gonna bring in a level top. And inside the level top, I'm gonna go to the RGBA and I'm gonna reduce these so that it doesn't let through the colors that I don't want to see. In this case, we'll make the red tracker first. So I'm going to remove all of the green and all of the red. I'm also going to raise the low R value just because our scene is quite noisy. A, this is a rubbish camera and you can, you can see all the noise on the blacks. And after we reduce the resolution, it only gets worse. And to help combat the noise, as well as raising my low R, I'm also going to raise the low in my scene. So doing so on both counts means that the low, RG, the low R means that it'll ignore most of the noise in the scene. And the low in range means that it's basically anything below a color because we have a nice black background is going to be removed from our image. So now I have this, my level is showing all of the reds coming through and it, most of the background is extracted. To help accentuate this, I'm going to take my level into a channel mix. And I'm going to tell the channel mix that instead of having RGB and A, I'm actually going to mix all my colors into red. And when we do that, it now means that any pixel that was before, even if it did have a, a G or a B value, a green or a blue value, it now means it's mixed purely into a red channel and it comes through as pure white. With this, we can see that there's still some artifacting on the bottom left hand corner from the noise where the slightly lighter patch is. So I'm going to add a threshold and I'm going to vary this. So it's about 0.6 and plus. I'm going to make sure it's less. And now it's saying that anything that is essentially less than pure white is not going to pass through. And even our green square that does have some red coloring to it, as all real world images will, does not make it to the final image. And now that I've done that, I'm going to check to make sure that it doesn't false read if I change my cube. I show it the blue side of the green and blue cube 
and we can see that for the most part it extracts everything properly. A slight increase to my threshold again means that we don't get any false positive readings. It also means that I can now move my red cube and when I'm not present in the scene we can still see it very clearly. With my blue cube showing, let's do the exact same process. So I'm going to add a level that removes everything but the color I want. In this case, I'm going to remove the red and the green, and I'm going to increase my low blue. So now things that were dark have a higher blue tint. I'm then going to increase my low in, and it means that the threshold for black increases as well. I add that to a channel mix. And this time, instead of them all being red values, they're going to be blue values. We add a threshold, increase its variable. And then in cases like this, where I have a slight artifact flashing every frame, I'm going to again increase my in low or reduce my blue low some, somewhat. It's about getting a compromise to maintaining the color that we want to see as much as we can while removing or lowering the white value of every other color in the scene. So while these may not seem like much, we're actually getting fairly positive reads of both the top surfaces of our cubes, which is exactly what we would expect. Now, I want to process these in some way so that I can gather exactly where this is every frame. And to do that, I'm going to get the pixel data for each image. So to visualize it, I'm going to go to a chop. I'm going to remove all my channels apart from red. And I'm going to call this L for luminance. And because we mixed everything in our channel mix, it doesn't matter which of the values we take. They're all actually the exact same. I'm going to name the red channel to be L. And inside my crop, I'm going to set it to the full image. And now if we have a look at this, we have 80 channels, or technically 79 channels, by 50, it should be 59 samples. Yeah, 59, I, 59. And that's because we have 60 by 80 pixels. Zero indexing means that it goes from 0 to 59 and 0 to 79. One more level of extraction is we want to actually see these pixel values. So I'm going to go from a chop to adapt and show you. So inside here, roughly a third down and a third in, so just next to the, the top quarter, we should be able to find our cube. And there we can see it's a cluster of ones in a field of zeros. And that's because all of these pixels have no color value at all, apart from this group in the middle, which a color has a color value of one which is thanks to our threshold, either on or off. So anything that's white will be one, everything else is zero. In part two, we'll process this data to get the exact location.